Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again doing our pandemic projects. And uh, this one I've selected today is an older one. It's the Daiwa. It's the A250RL. I believe that the A stands for the Apollo series. This one was made in Korea. It's a beautiful example of the reel. This one has been sitting, I don't know, in storage or something. Very dirty. Uh, but we'll try and clean that up as best we can. We'll show you how to take this apart and service it. If you have one, you'll know how to do that for future reference. And uh, if you don't have one, you see one out and about uh, as you're uh, traveling, looking at uh, flea markets or secondhand stores or, or wherever online. Uh, if you're interested in one of these, you'll know how it's made. This one's got significant pitting on the handle, not unusual for the, uh, the environment that we're in with the salt water and everything. It's got paint loss on the, uh, the real foot. But other than that, we're okay. It, it's running. I checked the uh, anti-reverse override and it's it's functioning properly. The bail is what I call a hammer bail. It hits this side here and flips. That That's going to need a little bit of oil, but other than that, we're fine. So we're going to start and we'll do this in two steps. We're going to start by taking these apart and then we're going to send these to an ultrasonic cleaner. And maybe we'll use some uh, flits up top here on the spool, get some of that old salt off of that. And when it's all cleaned up and uh, ready, we'll show you how to relube this thing, how to service it, and how to get it back out there fishing. So the first thing you usually want to do is take the exterior parts off. Notice if this button is moving or not. If the button's not moving, it usually means that this is a screw handle. This one is. You remove it by turning it in a clockwise direction. And as I'm taking off the exterior parts, which is like a, what I like to do first, I also like to thank our hometown heroes and everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. They really are fantastic folks and uh, putting their, themselves out there every day to try and keep us safe is just so wonderful. Uh, we just uh, were fortunate enough to get uh, our turn in the vaccination line. The folks that are on the front lines doing that couldn't have been nicer. So thank you to everybody, regardless of what your role is in, uh, in doing that. Okay, so now I want to take off the three side plate screws. This could be used as a, uh, a Phillips head screw, but what uh, it has a through screw uh, slot in there as well for a standard flat blade. And the flat blade on this one seems to be fitting better, so that's why I grabbed the, uh, the flat blade. I'm going to take these, I'm going to lay these off on my table here to make sure that they're all the same size before I go and do any more in terms of uh, putting them into my parch tray, which is the bottom of a milk jug. But I like to make sure that they're all the same size first because if there's one that's not the same size and it happens frequently, you want to note the location that that screw came out of. In this case, I think that they're all going to be the same. And uh, I like this series. I like this series. I like the silver series. Um, these reels were just there's a simplicity in their design. They're strong in terms of their manufacturing pieces and parts and components. And they just last. And this is an example of it. It's been really uh, probably in storage, probably in a shed maybe. Uh, hard to tell, but there is a lot of dirt on this reel. We'll get, get it cleaned. And uh, rather simple design. So we have an anti-reverse dog here. It's a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. If for some reason your uh, dog became detached. Notice that you have a spring. It starts on the stud over here. It comes and it wraps around the shank of this screw. It comes on top of the dog and it has a hook that comes to the back of that spring. So, uh, or that back dog. So just make sure that uh, you take a picture there. Because if you lose the orientation on it, you didn't take a picture. It's kind of hard to get that reference, right? All right, I'm going to take that off. This has got the uh, slot for that anti-reverse dog is on the outside of the main gear. Let's see if we can get the main gear out without, uh, nope, I didn't think so. We want to remove our axle shaft next so that we can remove the main gear. And that's uh, kind of standard on these reels. There's a back end of this um, main gear that's driving an oscillating gear. and. Uh, a lot of times you cannot get the uh, uh, the gear out, the main gear out, without getting that uh, that other piece out. 
Okay, so the axle shaft has been pulled out. That was attached to the cross wind block here with a screw. Take the cross wind block out, and you can see that the axle or the cross wind gear came out with that. So we've got some thick old dried grease here, which is another indication that this thing's probably been in storage for a while. Uh, this one came to me in a box of parts reel, so I think somebody probably gave up on it after a while. Probably wasn't working very well because of all the dried grease. Well, we'll take care of that. All right, when you take those two pieces out, then the main gear can come out. You'll see all the dried grease on the back of this as well. And a lot of what you're doing in terms of your regular service or even a restoration, is just getting that old chunky grease out of there and uh, getting uh, fresh coats of lubricants to, uh, to help it uh, perform better. I use cotton swabs, paper towels, and uh, if you need to, uh, use a degreaser and a penetrating oil like this one here. This is just a local hardware store brand. Uh, it's going to do fine for helping clean that up. You can see how it just kind of frees that up and uh, makes your job a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to put those into the tray. One more piece I'm going to take off the top here. That looks like a 13 millimeter nut, maybe 13, 14. It's 14. I'll grab the 13. Let's try the 14. There we go. Keep your tools close at hand. That way you don't have to, to uh, worry about where your work is. Or lay it down and then try to remember where, uh, where you were in the process, right? Okay, we're just going to work this up now. There we go. We have a ball bearing and a pinion shaft here. So this is a single ball bearing reel. I'll put that off to the side. We'll give that a bit of a cleaning as well. Let's just get the last piece off of this. And then what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to wind up pausing the video, going to put this in a cleaner, get the body parts uh, nice and dirt free. And uh, there's nothing here really to worry about in terms of putting in a cleaner, although I generally don't like to put the burring in. Uh, the rest of the stuff, I guess the drags on top of the spool there, we probably don't want to soak those as well. But I don't use any any strong detergents or anything in the cleaner. I always I use an ultrasonic cleaner for something like this. And generally speaking, the best I'll do, or the most I'll do, is a, uh, a dish detergent, a mild dish detergent. And uh, if possible, I'll just use uh, hot water. And that seems to do the trick, especially on old dirt. So, all right. so before you leave that part, make sure that uh, if there's anything identifying about the uh, pieces in terms of the uh, if, if there was a ridge or something else on that collar that you identified it. You'll also notice I left the screws on my table. I wanted to make sure they're the same. And in this case, we don't have a bearing. We have a bushing. The whole thing should just pull out. And uh, we can take all of this, do a little bit more cleaning here, and we will uh, come back to this uh, when these pieces are out of the ultrasonic cleaner. So uh, stay, stay tuned. I'll be back uh, momentarily the uh, the joys of uh, film and uh, all these parts uh, should be cleaned up okay so we're back and overall the uh, the ultrasonic cleaner did a nice job of getting most of this stuff out there was a little bit of uh, of elbow grease required but overall it's a nice clean uh, as as good as it can get clean uh, it can't take care of uh, uh, the corrosion the uh, I guess we call it boat rash, uh, but it got the dirt and the grease and the grime and the junk off of these things, made them as shiny as they could possibly be. So let's go ahead and uh, rebuild the reel then. So you want to start by uh, kind of it's a reverse process of the way we took it off. We're going to start with that uh, cross wind block. We're going to get fresh grease on there, cross wind gear, and get it on the face. And uh, let's go ahead and put this pinion gear in first. I think we'll do that. And grab that same idea. That is some browning on here, some some tarnish, but it's not uh, not dried grease or anything. We got rid of all of that in the cleaner. And I like the um, 
I don't like to use the degreasers in that cleaner because sometimes they're, they're strong and will separate things like a, uh, um, a finish on a, a label, for example. So I generally don't, uh, don't encourage anybody to, to kind of do that. Just checking for the collar. I knew there was a collar there somewhere. That goes in first. So we've greased that. I suspect if you wanted to, there's probably a burring that uh, that lines up with that and uh, could uh, be used to make this a ball burring reel. Um, quite honestly, it performs very nicely just as it is. But sometimes we talk about hot rotting reels. We just generally don't talk about something like this going to be hot rotted but uh, and the reason for that is the case has got stamped um, it's it's been stamped for the side of the main gear you can't it has no bushings it's just a solid case kind of thing so you could improve the performance by putting a bearing on that pinion but uh, you're not going to get much more spin out of it from uh, from the case side of it lining that screw up there. Sometimes I try to do this for the camera and it gets a little hard doing it versus how you might normally do it. So I apologize if my hand is getting in the way here. But uh, I'll just do that for the sake of efficiency. Alright, so we're going to put the three of these in the collar. As we, as we noted, sometimes those collars are different, have different uh, um, orientations. Sometimes it's not a true uh, uh, symmetrical type of a case. So just pay attention on those collars when you take them off. Particularly if they have a little stud on them it's a bail trip. Sometimes you'll see that there's a, a stud riding on that thing. Notice its relationship to the handle. Make sure that it's in that uh, section where you did that. Give it a spin. Make sure it's doing what it should. Now on this one there's play in this, right? So you want to push it up as you go to install the rotor. If you don't, you won't have the clearance to get the uh, the nut on the rotor there. So sometimes you can even uh, use a screwdriver to fill that gap while you go to put that rotor on to make sure that you get it on all the way. You'll see that it rides naturally. It rides above that, uh, that section. This was a 14 millimeter, so let's go ahead and put that back on. We noticed when we took it off that it came off in the traditional sense. So uh, we got to put it back on. Put it on that way. And just before the, the wrench, different wrench, but it just give it a spin. Make sure that it spins nicely, which it does. Okay, come on down now. Take that. Uh, cross wind block that we loaded up there. We already got the grease onto the pinion gear. The cross wind block. Next. Make sure that you get grease into the slot. Get it on the back that's going to ride on those channels. And then load. Now sometimes people get confused here as to which was which in terms of orientation. I'm going to just get a little bit of grease onto those two pillars that it's going to ride on. Oops, pulled that right out too. Didn't I? And uh, this is where pictures help. If you took pictures at the beginning, you realize that the uh, cross wind block is orientated that way. Okay, we're on that. Next up is that beautiful main gear. That cleaned up nicely. We know from taking it off that you had a uh, axle shaft that rides between there, so we got to make sure that as we go to reinstall, this goes on before the axle shaft goes on, or you won't be able to get the, uh, the clearance needed. And one of the, uh, the problems with a reel like this is, is that it gets set aside for a while. Like I said, this one came in dirty, so I'm going to assume it's probably been in a shed or maybe in the rafters in the garage or something and I can't say for certainly why it was what it was but that dried grease then immediately starts to affect performance if you try to use it so you want to make 
make sure you do a thorough cleaning like we did, and that will help uh, restore the performance of the reel. All right, we're coming down now through the pinion gear, and now we're trying to merge to the crosswind block. Okay, line it up, make sure you push it through, get that hole centered. We'll need a parts tray to get that flathead screw, which is the tie-down screw for this. Tighten that up. Now I took the drag washers off of this as part of the cleaning process, so we'll show you how to do that spool up top there once we finish the assembly on the, uh, on the internal. So a little bit of grease onto this shaft. Give it a spin, make sure everything's doing what it should be doing, which it is. Come on down now and grab that case. Now, as I mentioned, this is just pressed in, in terms of the hold here. It's just a pressed in bushing, so there's nothing you need to do there other than get a little bit of grease onto the plate. I like to leave this in, in that position and slide the case over, so that I have the anti-reverse dog free there. And then we can come across with our three screws to tighten this down. Now those are all the same size, they can go in any spot in this case. If there was one that you noticed was different, you could uh, come back and make sure that the uh, short one belonged in the, the hole that you noted, or the long one. Shimano does that a lot for reasons, the, uh, especially with the newer modern reels. The cases have a little bit of uh, contour to them and you'll, uh, you'll find that uh, there'll be a different size screw. I just flipped that uh, anti-reverse lever just to make sure it was working. I noticed there was a little bit of a gap in the case so we wanted to make sure that we got that right. So we'll tighten this down. Folks ask about a mechanical screwdriver. Uh, I don't recommend them, but if you need a battery powered assist, go ahead and do that. But don't tighten them down all the way. Uh, leave the screw short like that, and then just finish the last turn or two by hand. And uh, that way you won't risk binding the case or uh, having a problem otherwise. All right, this was a screw in, so let's go ahead and screw this in. That'll give us a little bit of a preview in terms of how the reel is operating. <laughs> What's not to like about that? Anti-reverse and all. Alright, we took the, the drag set out of here so that we could clean that. The drag set is a series of, um, of washers, both metal and uh, fabric. There's two uh, plastic washers. And there's a... Um, the fabric washer below. So that fabric washer is the first one in. I noticed that. Put some grease onto that and seat that in the bottom of the channel. Next one up then was a round washer. That goes next. And we had the first of the plastic washers. The middle one is always the eared washer. That goes up next. And we had the top plastic one. And we had the second round one, or keyed washer. And now we can just put that clip back in. Make sure that it gets seated in the groove. If you don't get seated in the groove, it's going to pop out. Now, the only purpose of that clip is to hold that stack in place. So, don't be afraid if... Uh, for somehow you lost it, it's not critical to the function of the reel. But know that if you go to adjust your drag knob, you may not uh, you may not have it operating properly as a result. The reel may just fall out. Okay, top uh, drag nut then, drag adjuster. that on. I have a little bit of grease on here from the transfer from my glove to the reel, so I'm going to just mop that up. We've, I believe we've oiled this. If I didn't do that, make sure that you get oil onto the line roller. The C 
seam of the uh, the bail arm. And this this one's just a dead end, but go ahead and do that as well. This has got what I call a slam bail. It's going to come over here and it's going to hit that uh, that extended bail arm and trip. You can see that, that it's working fine. When you uh, go to fish it, it's it's going to bang like that. A lot of people that have the, this reel uh, prefer to just manually close the bail after casting. So you just went through. Look at that reel. Is there any reason why you can't be a fan of a reel like this? I don't know. I, I enjoy this reel. I enjoy the older Daiwas. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, video. If you did, uh, I would ask you to subscribe. If you subscribe, please hit the notification buttons if uh, you want to see more. Uh, and I work on all kinds of reels, so this is just one example of the many you'll see as I post frequently. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to get back to uh, you with an answer if I, uh, if I know the answer. Maybe you need a resource or something, I'll try and point you to that direction. And if, if you have a reel that needs to be repaired, well, I do that by mail as well. So if you want any repair information, please send me an email to the uh, address on the business card that follows. And I'll be happy to provide you with repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Please stay safe, stay well, stay fishing, and uh, stay watching. Have a great day.